good morning friends i welcome you all to our online c class and today is our topic is bubble chart see searching and uh, sorting techniques are the most popular techniques they are widely used in computer based systems so we are going to discuss the different uh, types of the searching and uh, sorting techniques in these uh, subsequent classes so for today's class the organization of the topics are like this first we are going with the introduction of searching and sorting techniques and then we are discussing what are sorting techniques then we are going to talk in detail about bubble chart technique and we will try to evaluate the efficiency of bubble chart then we will write the pseudo code for bubble chart then we will go with c function for bubble chart and then we completely write a c program to sort the data using bubble chart then we will discuss some assignment and important questions related to bubble chart now if you see any computer based systems the searching and sorting techniques are widely used in every computer based systems the searching is used to know whether a particular item is there in a set of items or not and then sorting technique is used to bring some orderliness in the data these days every organization is making use of computer systems for storing their information you take any organization every organization maintains their employee details on computer based systems today you go to any shop or supermarkets so they used to generates the bills using computers and there they maintain the details of their customers on their computers and if you give any customer id to the shopkeeper immediately they enter your customer id on their system and retrieves your information last time when you have visited their shop and what are the items purchased by you and what are your uh, contact numbers what is your email id and how many family members are there in your family all that details they are maintained similarly you take any organization their employee details are also maintained on computer based systems if they enter the employee id on their computer so automatically it retrieves the information about that particular employee similarly organizations like insurance companies product based companies so they are completely going for automation a insurance company maintains the policy details of their customers if you tell the policy number of your policy taken from the insurance company insurance company immediately retrieves your information by entering your policy number on their system so how all this is happening so this is simply happening because of searching and sorting techniques and in this retrieval process retrieving the correct data from their information systems is very very important so therefore the searching technique the process of searching for an item among set of items and retrieving that information or the data from the information system is very very important in today's world 
and this searching and retrieval process becomes easier if the data values are kept in a orderly manner if the data is there in a, in a particular order it is very easy to search for an item suppose i will give you one example you wanted to get into one train and you assume that you went to the railway station and whatever train you want to get in that train is available on platform number 10 then what do you do since the train is available on platform number 10 so therefore you will search for platform number 10 and this searching is easy because the platform numbers are arranged in an orderly manner means you will be having first platform number one followed by platform number two followed by platform number three followed by platform number four like that so you know where the platform number 10 is located so because the all the platforms are arranged kept in a orderly manner one after the other in the increasing order or decreasing order so platform number 10 identifying it is very easy so means the platforms are there in a orderly manner so therefore it is easy for you to locate the required platform so locating the platform is nothing but searching you are searching for that platform and then you are reaching that platform assume the case if the data is not organized properly means the platforms are assume that the platforms are not kept in an orderly manner the platforms are kept in a random fashion suppose you are having platform number three first then platform number seven next and then platform number five next like that so what happens if the platforms are not organized in a orderly manner then searching for platform number 10 is a little bit riskier means we have to strive a little bit hard to locate the required platform that is platform number 10 in our case because data is not organized properly you have to go into each platform you have to check that platform number so orderliness is always very very important in the data so how how do we bring orderliness in the data so for that we use sorting techniques Sorting techniques are widely used to bring orderliness in the data. Means the data will be kept in the order using sorting techniques. Means sorting is a process of keeping the data organizedly. So here we are going to use different types of sorting techniques for keeping the data in the order. Which kind of data we will consider here. So since we are the learners beginners of the techniques used for organizing the data items we will take a small set of values but actually in real life in real time searching and sorting techniques are employed on files or the records in a file to keep them in the order based on a certain key value but we are not going to look into all that so just we are going to look into keeping the set of values in an orderly fashion means either in the ascending order or descending order and after discussing all the sorting techniques means for keeping data in the order whatever techniques are available after discussing few of those techniques then we will go for searching techniques so searching means retrieving the data Searching is the process of identifying the existence of a particular item in the set of items. And we defined sorting. Sorting is the process of bringing orderliness in the data. Uh, to keep the data in the order. So here we are going to work with few set of integer values. Our aim is to keep them in the order. Either in the ascending order or descending order. So, if the data is organized, means if the data is arranged properly, means in an orderly fashion, then it is called ordered data. If the data is 
not having any orderness then it is called unordered data or unorganized data searching unorderized unorganized data is little bit time consuming process and searching a orderly data is easier and it will take less time so therefore usually we always want to keep our data items in an orderly manner now let us concentrate on searching technique sorting techniques see to keep data value set of values in an order fashion a number of techniques have been developed so which technique is to be used to keep the data in a particular order so it is left to the decision of the user it is the decision of the user to select a particular sorting techniques so based on the user interest user can go with a particular technique because so many techniques are available to sort the data to keep the data in the order usually every user prefers to use the technique which is more efficient how do you tell that which sorting technique is more efficient how can you justify that a particular sorting technique or searching technique is efficient so for that we will consider already we discussed any algorithm efficiency is judged using its space complexity and time complexities the algorithm which is giving best space complexity and best time complexity they are said to be the best algorithm efficient algorithms so everybody prefer to go for this efficient algorithms and usually sorting techniques are of two types internal sorting techniques and external sorting techniques internal sorting techniques means these are the techniques which are applied only when all data items which are to be sorted if they are available in the main memory means the techniques which are used to sort the set of values or set of items which are stored in the main memory those techniques are called internal sorting techniques and external sorting techniques means these are the techniques which are used to sort the data items which are available in main memory and some are available in the auxiliary memory means secondary memory the techniques used for sorting such items which are stored partially in main memory and remaining are available in the auxiliary memory so those techniques are called external sorts here our concentration is only on internal sorting techniques and a number of internal sorting techniques are available and they are widely used by the organization to sort their files or the records in the organization i will name some of the popular sorting techniques that are available in the literature so one is the bubble sort other one is selection sort insertion sort merge sort quick sort heap sort so like that so many are there and here we are going to discuss few of the sorting techniques let us start in every class we are going to discuss one sorting techniques and using that sorting technique what is the procedure to sort the data items and we will explain the procedure for sorting the data items using that particular sorting techniques we give the pseudo code for that sorting techniques we will write a c function code for that sorting technique then we will write a complete c program for that sorting technique so let us start with bubble sort and bubble sort is the most popular sorting technique widely used by many programmers and beginners and the learners bubble sort is very easy to and it is widely used by the students to sort the data items because it is very easy to understand and easy to implement 
but the problem with the bubble chart is it gives least efficiency as compared with all the sorting techniques which are available that is the problem with the bubble chart it gives least efficiency so therefore if there is no way to go with this technique then only we use bubble chart otherwise we will go with other sorting techniques which are efficient than the bubble chart bubble chart is the least efficient technique means it will take more time to sort the given set of values see before we are going to proceed discussing bubble chart let us take some assumptions and the same set of assumptions we use to discuss all the sorting techniques so assumption 1 is we will take x as an array and which we are using to store n elements in the array and these n elements we want to sort and these elements n elements in the array x are stored from the index position 0 to index position n minus 1 n items are there since in indexing is starting from 0 the last element will be found at the index position n minus 1 and since elements are there in the array x and all these elements are considered as unordered unordered values so we have to keep them in the order so normally we prefer to keep the data in the ascending order ascending order means the smallest element will be kept at the beginning and the largest element will be kept at the end like that we will order means we are taking we are taking a unordered list we are making it into ordered list through the sorting before the sort the data is unordered unorganized but after the sort all the elements in the array x are in the order which order ascending order and to sort these items using a sorting techniques we are going to take several process several processes through the elements of array x means we are going to the elements of the array several types so here going through the items of array they are called pass one pass means going through all the elements first element to last element if you are moving from first element of the array to the last element of the array it is called a one pass like that we will be moving from first element to the last element several times so it is called a pass moving one time from first element to the last element of the array is called one pass like that we will have several passes and in each pass while we are moving from first element to the last element we are going to perform certain operations on the data items to keep them in the order so that is what the fifth assumption each pass consisting of performing some operations on the elements of the array x to make them in the order so that is the fifth assumption now what is the procedure in the bubble chart to sort the to bring the elements in the order so i request all of you to concentratedly listen to these points because these points we are going to apply on the set of values to keep them in the order so what are these points assume because we are going with several passes we use loop control variable i which will keep track of our passes means when i value equal to 0 we are going with first pass when i value equal to 1 we are going with the second pass i value equal to 2 we are going with the third pass like that so i we are going to use as a loop control variable which keeps track of our pass and we also use another variable j 
and which will keep track of the element positions in the array in each pass i is used for keeping track of passes through the array elements and j is used for keeping track of element positions in each pass now the procedure is like this in each pass of i what we are doing first we are comparing with the adjacent elements adjacent elements means the element which is there in index number 0 and element which is there in index position 1 they are called adjacent elements means x of 0 and x of 1 are compared then x of 1 and x of 2 are compared then x of 2 and x of 3 and then x of 3 and x of 4 like that we are going on comparing x of j is compared against x of j plus 1 where j value starts with 0 this is 0 is less than or equal to j which is less than n minus 1 j value starts with 0 means first element and it will go up to n minus 2 because last element is found at n minus 1 index position if n elements are there in the array since we are keeping elements from index position 0 so therefore the last element nth element is found at index position n minus 1 so j is going to have values from 0 to up to n minus 2 when j value is n minus 2 it compares x of n minus 2 with x of n minus 1 so j value is n minus 2 means n minus 2 plus 1 it becomes n minus 1 so j is going to have values from 0 to maximum n minus 2 so here you have to keep equal to 0 is less than or equal to j is less than n minus 1 means j can go up to n minus 2 value so in each pass we are comparing the adjacent two adjacent elements x of j and x of j plus 1 suppose when we are comparing these two means comparison operation we are performing for what purpose we are comparing these two adjacent elements to keep them in the order suppose if x of j value happens to be greater than x of j plus 1 then we will interchange them means we will swap these two values if x of j is greater than x of j plus 1 we will swap them swapping means interchange them otherwise means if x of j is not greater than x of j plus 1 we will keep them as they were in the list means we do not interchange them if x of j is not greater than x of j plus 1 we interchange them we swap them only when x of j means the first value is larger than the second value then only we will interchange them like that we will compare the two adjacent elements if the first element happens to be greater than the second element then we will interchange them like that we will move first x of 0 x of 1 is compared and if x of 0 is greater than x of 1 we will interchange them then we will compare x of 1 with x of 2 again interchange we will do if x of 1 value is greater than x of 2 and then x of 2 and x of 3 are compared so like that we will go up to x of n minus 2 and x of n minus 1 is compared n minus 1 means last element so that is one pass x of 0 to x of n minus 1 so by the time first pass is completed the last element the last element position contains the largest value of all this set of n values by the time the first pass is over in the last element position means in the index position n minus 1 you are going to have the largest value of all this largest value will bubble up there so because of that region it is called bubble chart in each pass one element is coming into its correct position so these elements are bubbling up in each pass to their concerned position to their right position after the first pass is over the largest element will be kept at the last after the second pass is over the next largest element will be kept in n minus 2 index position and by the time third pass is over the third largest element is kept in the n minus 3 position 
index position n minus 3 index position so like that when i the pass is over the element position n minus 1 minus i index position will contain the correct value at that place like that in every pass one element is kept at the right position right from the end of the list so if n elements are there we are going with n minus 1 passes in the first pass one element is kept at the end in the second pass next largest element will be coming into the second position from the end of the list and after the third pass is over the third largest element will be coming to the third position from the end of the list like that if n elements are there if you are going with the n minus 1 passes n minus 1 elements are kept in the order right from the end to the beginning of the list when n minus 1 elements are kept in the order automatically nth element is also in the proper position so therefore we do not have nth pass so if n elements are there in the array we are going to have maximum of n minus 1 passes through the list so once this ith pass is over then again we are going to repeat step 1 how many times this process is to be repeated n minus 1 times means n minus 1 passes we need to have let us take some set of values and we will try to work with that set of values using these points then you can easily understand so we have taken array x we have taken c eight elements what are these eight elements value 25 57 48 37 12 94 86 33 and all these elements we have kept in the array x since eight elements are there they are stored in the array x from index position 0 to last element in index position 7 since n value is 8 number of elements n value is 8 the last element is found at n minus 1 index position n minus 1 means seventh index position and we are going to this set of elements from first element to the last element and each move from first element to the last element is called one pass and in each pass we will compare adjacent elements we are starting with the first element of the array and finally we till we reach the last element we are going on comparing two adjacent elements what we will do in the comparison if first element is larger than the second element then we will interchange them if the first element is smaller than the second element then we don't interchange them see elements are initially in the unordered fashion there is no ordering among these values we have to keep them in the order so pass one in the pass one first we will compare these two elements x of 0 and x of 1 positions here 25 is there 57 is there so these two elements are compared so first element is not larger than second element so therefore they are kept as easily means we are doing comparison with between these two elements since first element is not larger than second element they are kept as easily so first two elements are compared and then we will compare these two elements 57 and 8 48 means after first comparison is over the data is like this and then we are going with second comparison in the second comparison we compare x of 2 position and x of 3 position in x of 2 position 57 is there and x of 2 position 48 is there x of 1 contains 57 x of 2 contains 48 we will interchange them means 45 because first element is larger than second element we interchange them we swap them so 48 coming here 57 is going there means after second comparison is over the data items 25 48 57 and the remaining elements are as as t's they are there because we have not gone with all other elements we have come only up to the third element index position 2 and then third comparison we will do third comparison is between x of 2 means index position 2 and index position 3 so if you compare this 57 and 37 are there 
57 first value is larger than second value so therefore interchange them 37 comes here 57 goes here remaining elements will be as is means in the third comparison is over the elements are ordered like this 37 is coming here 57 is going there see means the larger element is slowly 57 is slowly pushed to the end like that to their proper position so after the third comparison is over items are arranged like this so here I have written in the comparison. In the first comparison, no interchange. In the second comparison, there is interchange. Swapping is done. Third comparison, interchange is there. And fourth comparison. Fourth comparison is done between 57 and 12. Means index position 3 and index position 4. X of 3 and X of 4. So first element is larger than second element. So second element comes here. First element goes here. We are swapping these two values because first element is larger than second element. So after the fourth comparison is over, means interchange is done, the elements are arranged like this. Now the fifth comparison. Fifth comparison is between index position 4 and index position 5. X of 4 and X of 5. See first element is not larger than second element. So therefore no interchange here. In fifth comparison, no interchange. Okay. And then, fifth comparison is over. After the fifth comparison, the elements are come as easily in X of 4 and X of 5 positions. And then, sixth comparison is done between X of 5 and X of 6 position. 94 and 86. X of 5 is 94. X of 6 is 86. So, first element is larger than the second element. So, 86 comes here. 94 goes here. We are swapping those two values. So after the sixth comparison is over, interchange is over, elements are arranged like this. And then seventh comparison. Seventh comparison is between index position 6 and index position 7. So index position 6 contains 94, index position 7 contains 33. First value is larger than second value. So we will interchange them. 93 and 33 comes here, 94 goes there. So after 7th comparison is over, interchange is over, the elements are ordered like this. Now see, we have compared with all elements from index position 0 to index position 7. By the time 7 comparisons are over, in the first pass, so once first pass is over, the largest element has come to the last position. The largest value of the all the set of values is 94. See, previously at the beginning 94 is there in the third position from the end of the list. From the end of the list it is there in third position. Now, once pass 1 is over, it has come after 7 comparison. Pass 1 contains 7 comparison because these two, 1, these two comparison, 2, these two, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 comparisons. After 7 comparisons are over in the pass 1, the largest element has come to the last position so after pass one is over the data is like this 94 now it is in its correct position because it is the largest value of all the values in the array element so it is there at the last position the same way of comparison is done now in the second pass we will compare only from index position 0 to up to index position 6 because this element is already in its correct place so the last element will be removed after pass 1 from our comparison. Means in pass 2, we are comparing the elements from index position 0 to index position up to n minus 2. Okay, means we will go up to 6 because already this element is in the order. So let us see pass 2. So after pass 1, the data is like this 94. It is kept with the green color. Yes, it is filled with the green color. So means it is there. In the proper position. Now, comparison 1 starts between 25 and 48. X of 0, X of 1. First element is not larger than second element. So, no interchange. That is what in the remarks column I wrote. No interchange. So, all elements are kept as easily. And comparison 2 is between index position 1 and index position 2. Now, see, 48 is larger than, first element is larger than second element, 37. They are interchanged. Means 37 comes here, 48 goes here. And all elements are kept as easily after interchange is done. Because interchange, 
is between x of 1 and x of 2 position. Now, comparison 3 is done between x of 3 and x, x of 2 and x of 3 position. See, 48 and 12. 48 is larger than 12. So, 12 comes here, 48 comes here. They are interchanged. 12 goes here, 48 comes here. So, after comparison 3 is over, the data 25, 37, 12, 48. And the remaining elements are as easily they are there. So, interchange is over in third comparison. And the fourth comparison is done between index position 3 and index position 4, 48, 57. Because first element is not larger than second element, no interchange as easily, 48, 57 will be there as it is no interchange. NIC means no interchange. Next, fifth comparison is done between index position 4 and index position 5. So, 57 and 86. First value is not larger than second value. So, therefore, there is no interchange. No interchange after the fifth comparison. Sixth comparison is done between index position 5 and 6. 86 and 33. 86 is first value is larger than second value. So, therefore, they are interchanged. 33 goes here and 86 comes here. So, only up to here because already this is in the green zone, that element. So, we don't touch last element. Means after the second pass is over, second largest element has come to the second position from the end of the list. The second largest value among all this set of items is 86. 86 is coming to the second position from the end of the list. Like that, after the pass 2 is over, this many. Means, see, in pass 1, total 7 comparisons, because 8 elements are there. So, total 7 comparisons, is, seven comparisons are required in first pass. And in the second pass, because one element is removed out of 8, one element is there in its proper position. So, we have to work with remaining 7 elements. To compare two two elements at a time, how many comparisons we require to compare seven elements, two elements as a pair. So, only six comparisons in second pass. So, once second pass is our second largest element is in its proper position. And in the third pass, we will be having only com five comparisons because two elements are kept in the order. These two elements are kept in the order. We have to work with only six elements. To compare six elements pairwise, we need only five comparisons in pass three. And pass four, we require four comparisons. Pass five, we require three comparisons. Pass six, we require two. Pass seven, only one comparison. Because only one pair of value is there. And pass eight is not required. Because when you keep all seven elements in the order, automatically eight elements will be in the order. So like that, every pass, the elements are arranged like this. I will show the outputs after every pass. Pass 3 is over, third element is coming into its proper position. After fourth pass is over, fourth largest element is in its proper position. After fifth pass is over, fifth largest element will be in its proper position. Sixth pass is over, the sixth largest element is in its proper position. Seventh pass is over, seventh element in the pro means all seven elements are kept in the order. Once several elements are kept in the order, means automatically eighth element is also in the order. So eighth pass is not required. See, in the third pass, we are going with only five comparisons. Fourth pass, four comparisons. Five, fifth pass, only three comparisons. Sixth pass, two comparisons. Seventh pass, only one comparison. There is no eighth pass. If eight elements are there, how many passes are required? Seven passes. For eight elements, we need only seven passes. For n elements, we need n minus 1 passes. So, in the with the 8 elements in the first pass, we are having how many comparisons? Total 7. In the second pass, means in the first pass, for n elements, we are going to have n minus 1 comparisons. And in the second pass, n minus 2. And in the third pass, n minus 3. Fourth pass, n minus 4 comparisons like that. So, in the n minus 1th pass, we need only one comparison. That is how we are writing. So, this is about the bubble chart. In the examination, you have to take the values and their positions of the array. You have to give and like that you have to show. After the first pass, you show how the comparisons are done for pass 1. And then, you show the details 
after every pass pass 2 what is the status pass 3 is over what is the status pass 4 is over what is the status when pass 7 is over what is the status finally all elements are in the order so for one pass you give complete details for remaining pass simply give the details how the data look like after that pass is over in the array that is how you have to explain in the examination so means again i am repeating the procedure of bubble chart it takes several passes through the elements if any elements are there in the array bubble chart takes n minus 1 passes a pass means moving from first element of the array to the last element of the array is called one pass and in each pass adjacent elements are compared means x of j is compared with x of j plus 1 if first element happens to be the larger than the second element means if x of j is larger than x of j plus 1 and those two values are interchanged so like that in each pass we go with the comparison of adjacent elements right from beginning of the array to the end of the array by the time first pass is over the first element of the first largest element of the array will be kept in the last position once the second pass is over then the second largest element is kept in the n minus 2 position means in the second position from the end once third pass is over third largest element will be kept in the third position from the end of the list means n minus 3 position like that when n minus 1 passes are over n minus elements of the array are kept in the order and automatically the nth element is also in the order so this is how n minus 1 passes will be taking place for given set of n elements So here the, we will compare the number of computational statement because comparison is done by the CPU. So therefore to evaluate the efficiency of bubble sort, time complexity of bubble sort, is we will consider the computational statement. Here computational statement is number of comparisons. And you know in pass 1 n minus 1 comparisons, pass 2 n minus 2, pass 3 n minus 3 like that. n minus 1 pass only one comparison. So it is nothing but total number of comparisons required to sort all the data items is n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 plus and so on up to 1. It is nothing but the sum of first n minus 1 integers. We know the formula for sum of first n integers. The formula for sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2. But here we need to calculate the sum of first n n minus 1 natural number so therefore in n into n plus 1 by 2 formula wherever n is there replace that with n replace with n minus 1 so therefore that becomes n into n minus 1 by 2 n into n minus 1 by 2 means it is nothing but n into n n square minus n into 1 it is n divided by 2 it is nothing but half n square minus half n so means it is a quadratic equation without a constant in the form of ax square plus bx plus c where c is 0. So you are having a value as 1 by 2 and b value as minus 1 by 2. And in the place of x we are having n square. So this most contributing term in this equation is n square. So therefore this algorithm is said to having the time complexity of order of n square means it is a polynomial polynomial time complexity it is in the form of order of n power k where k value is 2 so means if you are going on increasing the n value the time taken by this bubble sort increases rapidly it will take more time if you are increasing n value n means number of inputs here so as the number of inputs are increasing so automatically it will take more time the time taken by the algorithm increases rapidly what is the space complexity? This is about order of n squares time complexity. Space complexity is very simple. Space complexity is nothing but the space occupied by the algorithm. And here we are using only array x. And probably we use two variables. One variable i to keep track of passes. And another variable j to, uh, to keep track of array index positions. While comparison x of j with x of j plus 1 like that j is going to change from index position 0 to index position up to n minus 2 
Okay, so J is keeping track of index positions in the array and then I is keeping track of the passes. So therefore IJ and wherever interchange is required we use one variable temporary variable T. So means we need storage for n elements n integer values and we are using three additional variables that is i j and t variables total three variables and n integer values we are storing so total n plus three so n plus three variables we are using in the program n plus three values where integer values we are storing each integer and a 16 bit machine you know it occupies two bytes of space in the computer memory so n plus three values they occupies 2 into n plus 3 bytes of space means it is nothing but 2 into n plus 3 means n plus 3 values are there integer values each integer requires 2 bytes so 2 bytes space means each integer n plus 3 integers requires 2 into n plus 3 bytes of space means 2 n plus 6 so it is also means the space complexity is in 2 n plus 6 so if you wanted to tell using big O notation, it is an equation of the form 2n plus 6. So therefore, the most contributing term is n. So therefore, it is order of n, space complexity. Space complexity is order of n. Means as the n value is increasing, the space occupied by the algorithm increases linearly. That is what. Exactly how much space it occupies? 2n plus 6 bytes of space in the computer main memory for storing n values and 3 integer values. That is how you can give the space complexity. Time complexity already it is shown here. Now pseudocode for the bubble set. Whatever operation we did, we will write this pseudocode. Pseudocode means it is a generalized syntax. It is not specific to any programming language. It uses generalized words from the English to represent the each action. So procedure means function in C language. Generalized syntax in pseudocode it is called procedure. Procedure name is bubble. So it takes two arguments. One is array x and n. n is the number of elements in the array. So x contain n elements. So we are using three other integer variables. Just now I said i, j and t. i is used to keep track of number of passes. j is used to keep track of array index positions. And t is used as a temporary variable that is used when you are performing a swapping. Temporarily we will store value, one of the integer values in t and then we will move it to some other place. See for i equal to 0 to n minus 1 2 because n elements are there so total we are going to have for n elements n minus 1 passes. n minus 1 passes means for i is equal to 0 to n minus 2 2 means I can go up to n minus 2. Okay, so this statement should be uh, and written like this. Since array index uh, i value is starting with a 0, so we need n minus 1 passes only. n minus 1 passes means since it is starting with a 0, you have to write only n minus 2 here. I wrote wrongly. Just remember that this is for i equal to 0 to n minus 2, not n minus 1. If you are starting i value with 1, n minus 1 is correct but we have started i value with a 0 so it should be n minus 2 0 to n minus 2 so total n minus 1 values means n minus 1 passes you remember that so just note that this n minus 1 should be replaced with n minus 2 because i value is starting from 0 and then for each value of i, j changes from 0 to up to n minus 2 minus i. So when i value equal to 0 means first pass. So j should go from 0 to up to n minus 2. When j value equal to n minus 2, it compares the element which is there in the position n minus 2 and n minus 1 position. Okay, so when i value equal to 0, so n minus 2 minus i, n minus 2 minus i means i value is 0 so it, it is going up to n minus 2 okay so it is going on comparing when j i value equal to 0 j changes from 0 j value is first 0 when j value is 0 x of j x of j means x of 0 
and j value is 0 0 plus 1 means x of 1 x of 0 and x of 1 is compared if x of 1 is greater than x of 0 is greater than x of 1 means first element value if it is greater than the second element value they are interchanged so interchanging temporarily x of j is stored in the t, t variable and to the x of j we are copying x of j plus 1 value and to the x of j plus 1 we are copying this t value means both values are swapped if x of j is not greater than x of j plus 1, they are not swapped. Simply, it is going with another j value. j value is incremented by 1, means j value becomes 1. Previously, it is 0, it becomes 1. When j value equal to 1, it compares x of 1 with x of 2. If first x of 1 is greater than x of 2, they are interchanged. Otherwise, it uh, this code is not executed, elements are kept in the same order. j value now becomes 2. When j value equal to 2, x of 2 is compared against x of 3. And if x of 2 value is greater than x of 3, they are interchanged. If they are, if x of 2 is not greater than x of 3, then they are not interchanged. So, j is going with the other value, 3. When j value is 3, x of 3 is compared against x of 4, like that. Then j value becomes 4. Then x of 4 is compared against x of 5. And then j value becomes 5. Then x of 5 is compared against x of 6. And then j value is incremented. x j value becomes 6. x of 6 is compared against x of 7. You, you, we have elements up to x of 7 position. 8 elements we have taken. So x of 7 position elements are there. So j, when j value equal to 7, it will stop. When j value is 7, so this condition becomes false, then it will stop. Then i value becomes incremented by 1. i value becomes 1. When i value equal to 1, we are going with the second pass. In the second pass, since i value equal to 1, see n minus 2 minus 1 means n minus 3, n minus 3. n value is 8, 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3 means 5. j can go up to value 5. When j value is 5, x of 5 is compared against x of 6. Because x of 7 is already in the correct position after the first pass. So, the comparison is last comparison is done between x of 5 and x of 6 in the second pass. So that is what we did. The last comparison is done in the second pass between x of 5 and x of 6 because already x of 7 position is in the order. So this is the last comparison 86 and 33 33 comes here 86 goes here so x will j will go maximum up to 5 when j value is 5 the comparison is done between x of j and x of j plus 1 j plus 1 means x of 6 so j will changes from 0 to up to maximum 5 so that is what here it is written 0 to when i value equal to 1 i value equal to 1 means second pass so it becomes equation becomes n minus 2 minus 1 when i value equal to 1. n minus 2 minus 1 means this becomes minus 3. n minus 3. n value is 8. 8 elements are there. 8 minus 3, 5. j will go up to 0 to 5. When j value is 5, first initially 0, 1 elements are compared. Next 1, 2 and then 2, 3 and then 3, 4 and then 4, 5. Then 5, 6. j value maximum 5. When j value is 5, it compares x of 5 with x of 6 index position. Like that. So, i value will go up to n minus 2. When i value is n minus 2, j will changes n minus 2. i is replaced with n minus 2. So, it becomes 2n minus 4. 2n minus 4. So, since n value is 8, yes, when i value is n minus 2, the equation becomes 2n minus 4. Since n value is 8, 2n means 16. 16 minus 4. See, n minus 2 minus i value is n minus 2. So, if you replace i with n minus 2 value, it becomes minus n plus 2. Minus n plus n will cancel. Minus 2 plus 2 get cancelled. Means it becomes 0. J changes from 0 to 0. Means J value is only 0 when I value is n minus 2. So when J value is 0, only one comparison is done. X of 0 is compared against X of 1. So that is in n minus 
वंत पास मीन्स द लास्ट सेवंथ पास ओनली वन कंपेरिजन इज डन दट इज वॉट वी हेव रिटर्न सो देन वेन आई वैल्यू इक्वल टेन माइनस वन सो दिस लूप इज गोइंग टू स्टॉप ओके सो लाइक दट द सूडो कोड सेम सूडो कोड वी इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू सी प्रोग्रामिंग कोड सी प्रोग्रामिंग फंक्शन वाइट our function name is bubble sir takes x array as an argument and the number of elements in the array n so now we have taken three variables like in pseudo code i j t and i is going to change from 0 to n minus 2 i value will be going from i equal to 0 to here also i wrote wrongly so keep this as n minus 2 n minus 2 this value i is less than or equal to n minus 2 i plus plus and enter the loop j changes from 0 to j is less than or equal to n minus 1 minus i so up to that i will go j plus plus and if x of i at a, x of j at an instant of time if it is greater than x of j plus 1 you just swap these two values for swapping the two values we are using temporary variable t so in the t first we are storing x of j value we are copying into t then x of j becomes empty to that we are copying x of j plus 1 value now x of j plus 1 is empty so into that x of j value we are copying so here we have to write not x of j t we have to write x of j plus 1 is equal to t that is what we wrote here okay so this is also you have to replace x of j with the value t there T is equal to x of j, and x of j is equal to x of j plus one. X of j plus one is equal to t. Interchanging, swapping two values. So this is how program is written. The function for bubble sort. Now let us write the complete program for bubble sort. So where in the main program we read the elements into the array, n elements from the user, and then we will display the elements of the array before sorting. then we will make a call to bubble sort so it will sort all the array elements then we will display the elements of the array after sorting so they are automatically in the ascending order so this program reads n values from the user and sorts them using bubble sort and this program is same for all only the function will change as we are going on discussing different sorting te techniques selection sort insertion sort and merge sort quick sort as the program main function program is same only the function calling a function this function instead of bubble sort there we are going to have in selection sort and insertion sort merge sort quick sort like that we are going to have the main program is same for all the cases so here we have declared the bubble sort because bubble sort completely i did not write because bubble sort if i write as it is around 10 letters bubble is 6 letters as for the sort is 10 letters but in most of the c compilers can recognize variable values up to a maximum of 8 characters so therefore i did not write sort i wrote only bubble bubble means it is bubble sort function we have declared the function that it is taking array as an argument and the number of elements in the array as argument two arguments it is taking first argument is array name second argument is number of elements in the array so inside the main function we declared array x with a maximum capacity to store 20 elements and all the 20 elements are of integer type and a normal variable n so n is used to store the number of elements in the array n represent the number of elements available in the array so n value is always less than or equal to 20 because array is declared with a capacity maximum capacity to store only 20 integer values i is used as a loop control variable for reading elements into the array and for displaying the elements from the array so first we are displaying a message to the user how many integer values are there after seeing this message user may enter n value as 10 means 10 integer values are may be there with the user so we are instructing the computer to read that integer value and store that value in variable n then we are asking the user to enter all integer values in a row so he will be entering all integer values in a row then we are instructing the computer 
to read all that integer values from 0 to i will go up to less than n means i can go up to n minus 1 so they are stored in the index positions 0 to up to n minus 1 we are storing we are reading and we are storing them in the array and then we will display the elements of the array before sorting the elements of the array from 0 to n minus 1 index position they are whatever elements are there so they are we are displaying usually they are not in the sorted order because user will enter all the numbers of the array randomly so therefore when you display those elements they are usually they are not in the order so this is the statement which are displaying the array elements which are unordered and then we are making a call to bubble bubble sort function by mentioning the function name bubble and it returns this bubble sort function returns nothing so therefore its return type is mentioned as white we are passing we are making a call to bubble sort function by passing array name x as the argument first argument and the number of elements in the array n as a second argument since we know array name acts as a pointer to the first element so it is nothing but you are passing an array means you are passing the pointer which is pointing out the first element of the array so therefore the calling fun called function bubble works with actual values so passing array name as an argument means indirectly we are passing pointer as a argument to the called function so called function and the calling function now works with actual values of the array elements means whatever array is there with the main function calling function called function will work with the same values means if the called function changes the positions of the elements then they are getting reflected in the calling function array because we are passing array name means it is nothing but pass by pointer pass by address pass by reference mechanism so therefore both the calling function and the called function works with the same value so when you make a call to bubble function automatically main function is kept pending it is suspended for its execution control is directly transferred to the bubble sort function bubble sort function is defined here with x as an array name and n again same names we are using here as inside the bubble sort definition also x is an array and n is the number of elements inside the bubble set we declared three variables like we wrote in pseudo code or functional code so here we are i is taking care of the number of passes i is starting from value 0 and it will go up to n minus 2 so this uh, n minus 1 should be replaced with value n minus 2 so i value starting with 0 i is less than or equal to n minus 2 replace this one with value 2 then it is right i plus plus then for j equal to 0 j is going to change up to n minus 1 minus i times then j plus plus so it compares as we discussed x of j for every value of j x of j is compared against x of j plus 1 means it is taking passes from first element of the array to the last element of the array in each pass means for each value of i j is moving from first element to the last element to be sorted in the array so it is going on comparing adjacent elements if the first element is larger than the second element interchange is done if first element is not larger than the second element no interchange is taking place means this code is not executed simply it is continuing with the next value of j once j moves from first element to the last element to be sorted in the array then this loop will be over inner loop then control comes to the outer loop so when control comes to the outer loop i value is incremented it is going with another pass so like that by the time all passes are over n minus one passes are over all elements in the x array are kept in the order and then control is coming back to your main program here since this call is over then it continues with the next statements in the main program once bubble sort job is over control is coming back to the main program and the main program starts executing from the statement where it was stopped previously so it was stopped at this statement the execution continues from this statement so printf elements of the array after sorting 
we are displaying all the elements stored in the array from index position 0 up to index position n minus 1. i is less than n means I can go up to n minus 1. So all elements are displayed. So when elements are displayed here, you can find that all these elements are kept in the sorted order. So then we are closing the program. Return 0. So program is over. So like that you can write the program. For all sorting cases the main function is same only this function is going to change here we have used bubble sort technique and in the next class we are going to discuss selection sort technique so only the main function will be change will be same but this function will change so instead of bubble there we are going to write selection and the logic of this selection sort we will write this is the logic for bubble sort so means in the bubble sort we discussed the technique with an example how the comparisons are done and what is the states of the elements after each pass that way, uh, the, in that way you have to explain in the examination then if they are asking to write this pseudo code or algorithm you can write both algorithm and pseudo code since pseudo code is given you can write them as in english sentences you convert them into English sentences. You write algorithm and pseudocode. And if they are asking to write the C function, the C function is also given to you like this. And if they are asking to write the program to sort array elements using bubble sort, then you can write a complete program like this for bubble sort. And then important questions for this class. What are the assignment questions? So in the every examination, they are asking two sorting techniques here we are going to discuss bubble sort selection sort insertion sort and then merge sort and quick sort are not mentioned in the syllabus but they are asking quick sort was asked in the last semester so therefore we are going to discuss quick sort also along with the bubble sort selection sort insertion sort we are going to discuss quick sort means total four sorting techniques we are going to discuss in the same manner for every sorting techniques we are going to discuss the procedure of sorting what is the technique used by that sorting method and then explanation with an example and then the pseudo code and then c code and a complete C program using that sorting technique. So we are going to discuss all these concepts for every sorting technique. For every sorting technique, it will take one class. So here the assignment questions are for this class. Explain bubble sort with a suitable example. Means what is bubble sort and what is the procedure of bubble sort to sort the elements of the array. That steps you have to give clearly and you have to explain with a suitable example already we have taken example and we have explained the procedure of bubble sort with the example after for pass one how the comparisons are done after each comparison what is the status only for first pass you explain and for all other passes means n minus one passes remaining n minus two passes first pass is over total n to sort n elements n minus 1 passes will be there first pass is over and the remaining n minus 2 passes just you give the status like this after pass 2 is over what is the status of the elements after pass 3 is over what is the status pass 4 pass 5 up to n minus 1 pass is over what after n minus 1 passes are over so all elements are usually in the order so for first pass you have to clear the status of elements for every comparison and for all other passes, you just give the status once the pass is because the same thing is done in each pass. Whatever operations are done in the first pass, the same type of operations are done in every pass. So therefore, you just explain with the, the example. And then the next assignment question is write the pseudo code and algorithm for bubble sort. So pseudo code is given to you just you convert them into English sentences and write the algorithm also because in the examination already I told if they are asking either algorithm or pseudo code you write both that is always best algorithm means you have to write using English sentences and then pseudo code means it is a using generalized syntax generalized words 
each word is called a keyword they have to be written in capital letters you write this sudo each word represent a task to be performed by the computer then the third question is write c program to sort write a c program to sort n integer values using bubble sort so this is how you have to write the program shown to you the complete program main program main portion of the program prototype declaration of the that sorting function and then main program and then the function call you have made in the main program here and before making the function call print the status of the elements the elements of the array before sorting and then after sorting after this sorting technique is called when you make a call to sorting technique automatically it sort all the elements and after the sorting also you just display the array elements so before the sort they are unordered and after the sort they are in the ordered manner so this is the function definition function definition means complete implementation of the function and that c program you have to write complete c program and you use appropriate comments at the required places and explain what operation you are going to perform using comments so when you are writing statements when you are doing most important operation in the comments you explain what operation you are going to do perform there so this is how you have to write so in the last class yesterday's class i gave three assignment questions and in this class i have given three assignment questions total six questions these are considered as assignment six and these answers six answers you write and submit the six answers to me through mail or whatsapp as by tomorrow 1 pm and it is found that some students are not submitting assignment questions and remember all your marks are based on assignments so therefore for every assignment there are some marks so therefore if you submit every assignment you will, you are going to get a cent percent marks and all these are the important things and if you have any doubts then you can call me on my mobile number 9848919656 okay so if you have the doubts you can call me we will i am going to clarify your doubts through a phone call or through a zoom call okay so thank you all thank you for your patience listening and the next class we discuss selection sort okay selection sort and then insertion sort and then quick sort after these sorting four sorting techniques are over then we will be going for searching techniques there are two searching techniques are available popular searching techniques are two they are one is linear search and another one is binary search so with this your searching and sorting techniques will be over okay so thank you all for your patience listening thank you thank you once again